We're back on the road this April with our live show, Cocaine Cowboys. If you want to hear the story of Ireland's love affair with Colombian powder and those who made millions in the gold rush, join us in Galway's Town Hall Theatre on Saturday 6th of April, Killarney's INEC on Saturday the 13th of April and in Belfast's Waterfront Studios on Saturday the 27th of April. Tickets from venues or at mcd.ie. So we've heard a lot of the um, names of the EncroChat handles and some yeah. of them are, you know, Big Boy One or... <laughs> I don't know, what would, you, what would you go for yourself? Uh, um, I don't know, The Boss or something? Would you go for- <laughs> I definitely, I definitely go Silver Fox One. That's definitely what I would use. If hopefully it's not already taken, but yeah. if ever I do become involved in international drug trafficking, that is definitely. Or in your case, you my could reject that, and you could call me the employee, or, <laughs> the underling, um, the underling. Yeah. So anyway, Patter Keating, uh, Peter. Patter, Anthony Keating, to give him his full name, because yep. he's in the High Court uh, fighting an extradition warrant to the UK where he's wanted on firearms charges along with Thomas Bomber Kavanagh, Liam Byrne, Jack Kavanagh, the son of Bomber Kavanagh. Um, and it's all centred around this Encro chat uh, hack and messages that the NCA, the National Crime Agency in the UK, um gathered and launched an investigation and it turned out that they were basically trying to give up firearms to make Bomber Kavanagh look good in the run up to his uh, trial. He actually pleaded guilty in the end and there wasn't a trial on massive uh, drug importation uh, and money laundering charges. Of course, he's serving 21 years. 21, I was going to say 22 there, 20 20 odd years in prison for that. But, um, you know, we have been kind of talking around this story because we didn't know much of the detail of it. Uh, but in the in the courts this week, it turns out, of course, that they're all on EncroChat phones. And Patter Keating, his username is Short Texture. Now, that sounds really <laughs> Short Texture. I don't know. It's sort of like really mild mannered, isn't it? Like, it's not like... No, it's not like, uh, you know... Big, uh, mad uh, bastard. Like, it's... <laughs> It's not, it's not short texture is. Short texture. I wonder, yeah. did he just, you know. But it's it's a gentlemanly name, isn't it? I don't know if he texture. is tall or. or I don't or even know what short texture is. Oh, you think that's to do with his height? No, I don't know. I would have thought that was a material in a jumper. Could be. You'll have to write to him in his. Cashmere um, one or something. Or, yeah. Um, I thought, and of course, he's he's the court is alleging that he's texting uh, Liam, Liam Byrne. Byrne, who's using the name. Thai Live, is it? Where? Spell that? T H I L I V E. I'd have to put my glasses on. Yeah. That doesn't even mean anything. That's like as if they they reached into <laughs> a, a, you know, a bag of Scrabble pieces and they yeah. came out with those letters and they just sort of put them together. Yes. And what's Bomber Kavanagh's handle? Well, I don't think Bomber Kavanagh is using it. And in fact, what they do say, I think at one point during the proceedings, is there's a, another individual is, is texted who's a, a runner or an associate of Bomber Kavanagh. And that, of course, is what we heard at the time, wasn't it? That that um, he he wasn't, he was much more careful, though he was ultimately caught out. So they have, they've identified... Um, Lean Burn, or who they claim is Lean Burn. So Lean Burn is Thai Live. You're Thai right. T H I L I V. I would say that's a, a a typo. Yeah, because it means nothing. Jack Kavanagh is Basil Badge. Basil Badge, which is as Jack opposed Kavanagh. to Basil Brush. Yeah, which who of course is the son of of Thomas Bomber Kavanagh. And then they also they have another Enco Chat user who they call Macro Safe, who's described as a messenger for Thomas Bomber Kavanagh. Yeah. So we did also Marco hear, Safe. Marco Safe, sorry, yeah. is it? Yeah, Marco Safe. So we did hear that Bomber Kavanagh, even on the encrypted phones, was yeah. more, more, even more careful. He was a step away. He, he was always a step away. Again. He liked. To, he liked to believe he was. But in actual fact, it was the phones that got him yeah. in the end in the case of the drugs and the yeah. money laundering because, you know, while he was sort of remaining a step away, he was ordering everybody to delete their messages. Yeah, they yeah. weren't, they were doing what I was doing sometimes as well. You know, when you forget, you know, you've you have a lot to remember yeah. and you should delete and in actual fact you take a photograph yeah, of it. Yeah. They were all doing that. Yeah. 
I mean, human beings are human beings and we're, our brains are very full. They are. And of course, like it's actually fascinating the whole case because they're talking 14 firearms, right? So it, they describe in the court how UK of officials on May 2021 travelled to Newry on the County Down and County Armagh border and discovered these weapons, which include German Heckler and Czech Scorpion yeah. submachine guns and various other things. And of course, if you look back on that seizure, um, you know, which was well reported at the time, because I think it was possibly the biggest firearm seizure in a large number of years in the North. Mm. Obviously, there was huge amounts of seizures over during the Troubles, but this is one of the biggest since, if not the biggest, um, which I stand to be corrected on. And of course, ultimately, those weapons were discovered to be in the possession of a drugs gang in the North uh, called The Firm. Firm, yes. Now, and The Firm are uh, a very interesting organisation. So do you think that the Kavanaugh organisation sold them to The Firm and then leaked where they were oh, to I get think, them seized? Well, I mean, that is certainly the implication. Certainly what it looks like for the moment. No, absolutely. Hear, absolutely. Know. I mean, so and what, it was 11 weapons that were discovered. 14 weapons were under discussion in the... Anchorage chat communications, uh, Keating had sourced them through the Netherlands and he talks about them being in the flat and he talks about uh, on the Anchorage chat communication about Liam Byrne being able to, yeah, he says to source Glocks for three and a half grand and there's a lot of this sort of communication. We're only getting the tip of the iceberg really, I imagine when the actual case goes ahead, we'll get more of that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's... Like it, it, it seems certainly from the implication from what we read here is that the firm who the firm became possibly one of the biggest drug dealing organizations in the north over a period of time. They were kind of a next generation crime gang in the north, I suppose, where um Traditionally, there there'd always been drug gangs, but they're very much divided between Catholic and Protestant, you know, re with Republican tendencies or or loyalist tendencies. But the firm were one of these sort of new wave where they were cross border. There was people who'd been had ties to both sides, both sides of the paramilitaries. And you you always heard about the the Kinahan cartel being involved in in sending drugs up the border. And like this is clearly what had happened. Um obviously the location of the guns seems to have the 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 allegation is that that was deliberately leaked to the, to British police, and this was the, the guns were seized. Obviously, I don't think there was any arrest certainly at the time in connection with with that seizure. There was Yuri, no, no. So it's just it just shows you the the reach of these guys, um, and you know. And look, that was a lot of weapons, yeah. right? That obviously the Cabinet organization managed to source. If yeah. they did sell them to the firm and then later tipped off the police on yeah. where to find them or whatever happened, that's all a bit murky, that bit of it. But nonetheless, it was the Kavanaugh organisation who sourced them. They, three years previously, had been hit by the Garda's Drug and Organised Crime Bureau in Dublin, yeah. in an industrial estate where their weapons headquarters was discovered. And I think at that point, 19 weapons primed and ready yeah. for use were found. Um, Mr. Nobody and AKA Declan Brady and others we've spoken about were caught and uh, later put before the courts and convicted in relation to that. But that is together 20 firearms we know of within that short space of time. And we also know that when Bomber Kavanagh set up his new drug operation, which is what he's doing in jail, because this is the one that was busted. It was actually a piece of paper that was found in Rathcool in that firearms headquarters that led police uh, to give their British colleagues uh, a tip off about an address that was in the Birmingham area. It was a warehousing that Kavanaugh was using for a sort of a carousel of, he was, he had heavy machinery, which was being brought in through Belgium, through the Netherlands, across Europe, into the UK. And the machinery was containing, there was drugs contained in the machinery. He would then fill it with the cash and send it back. So it was this kind of carousel situation. Companies, real companies, names were being used, but they had no idea what was happening. But my point is there was guns coming in that time as well. Yep. Kavanaugh wasn't charged in relation to one of his co-accused took a guilty plea on a gun. A firearm was being delivered that direction as well. So Kavanaugh had, and this is just a little 
dip into what was going on. It's a dip into it within that. It's effectively a dip into that three month period, isn't it? Literally. Yeah. I mean, the, obviously not to get back into all the details of the Anchor Chat, but it's really a snapshot of our trees. Well, it's a snap- I have a few comments on this on the Anchor Chat, but we'll get back no to it. No doubt. That. But it's basically a snapshot of a three month period where the, the authorities hacked into these encrypted phones, recorded all the messages, you know. So what happened in those three months has become public record, I suppose, now that it's with the police. But obviously there was years of 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 up, being up to no good before that. I mean, it yeah. also shows you, even at that stage, which was 2020, um, we're dealing with that, you know, we would think of the 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 Kavanaugh organization and the Byrne organization to have been diminished under extreme pressure at that stage. I mean, it certainly wasn't at its very peak because a number of people had ended up in prison. There'd been a large number of seizures. Obviously, David Byrne had been killed and um, people were in and out of the country. But even at that stage, clearly they were, they were. Oh, it's business as normal. It business. I mean, it's like a cockroach, yeah. isn't it? Because I mean, in 2016, uh, David Byrne is killed, which obviously isn't going to finish off the operation, but you'd imagine that they would take time to perhaps grieve as yeah. normal people. Instead, what I saw from the court case that resulted in in Kavanaugh's jailing was that in the literally in the weeks after that murder, as he's standing to mourn his brother-in-law, yeah. he is renting or his people are renting this new premises to set up this new route of drugs at, in and cash out and weapons in and cash out. He gets his first successful shipment through and by Christmas or after he's celebrating in New yeah. York, literally months after his brother-in-law has been shot dead. So he's back in business, back in the game, never stops. Obviously, 2017 January is when his big, huge weapons HQ is busted. And essentially his team here are disseminated yeah. by the Guardi or certainly they begin to become under serious scrutiny. Um, there's a number of hit teams close to him that are caught in the process of trying to kill people. A lot of them are jailed, kept in custody. Still, he keeps going. Yep. Still, he keeps going. He himself is facing a huge, big, hefty prison term. Still, the whole operation keeps going. Yeah. I like, mean, and what of it now? Yeah. I is mean, it still going now? Is he still overseeing the importation of drugs and weapons into the UK and onwards to Ireland? Yeah, I mean, it's it's incredible uh, that, that at that point, certainly they... they 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 must have been a diminished organization, but it just shows you the value of these contacts. And you can see that there. I mean, three and a half thousand for a Glock is what is, you know, Patter Keating or who who the this, this state alleges is Patter Keating on, on Anchor Chat says Liam Byrne can get firearms for. They obviously have these contacts in, they're talking about it in, in the Netherlands. And, you know, that's it's the money, yeah, and the contact and and the the, the transport routes yeah. is really and that use of those that machinery I'm talking about. I can't remember exactly what piece of machinery it was, but it's a real heavy duty kind of a yeah. It's it's to stop things being X rayed. Them. They're sort of uh, hollowed out, basically, aren't they? Yeah. It was a piece of machinery that was uh, for like it was a giant, big kind of tubular thing. Mm. And what they had done was they had used special paint and materials to cover it. So it was, already it was metal. You know, the x-ray uh, yeah. X-ray technology couldn't see into it or whatever. How, do you, how does that work? Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> Go on anyway, sorry. I don't even think it's that technical to say the x-ray technology couldn't no. see into it. No. But anyway... Um, it was kind of like, it was almost like Harry Potter's invisible cloak that they put over the piece of machinery. There, there you yeah. go. Now that's, that's a scientific <laughs> explanation like that we've been waiting for. That's more like it. But I can yeah. actually see the, the, the piece yeah. of machinery and the special painted side and everything. And basically they have this transport hollow. Yeah. Uh, they have companies set up or they're mirroring companies that would be moving this kind yeah. of stuff across uh, Europe. And, you know, when you think of the amount of transportation yeah. that goes on every day yeah. across Europe, particularly through Belgium and Brussels is the crossroads of Europe. Yep. So you're driving trucks through there, you're, you know, moving on to the UK. It would be the look of the draw for anyone to stop them, to open it up, to find this piece of machinery and to go, here, has that got Harry Potter's invisible and cloak <laughs> on it? Open it up for me. And exactly, it isn't really the look of the draw, is it? When they it's find those seats, it's led. intelligence, so they know something. I mean, I remember actually with the, the Curtis Warren case, uh, you know, 
Cocky Warren, the famous uh, British cocaine dealer. Hudlin. Yeah, and they had, they, they'd actually built this concrete structure and even though they knew the drugs were there, they couldn't even break into it. So it's an old strategy of, yeah. but you obviously have to have, be a major league criminal that can invest in that technology that has the money to put in, the expertise and the, just the structures. And I suppose what you see with this, this case is that that structure remained mm. in place or remains in place Possibly we don't. Well, people are behind bars. But people are behind bars. Mm. I mean, it's an interesting case, I think, as well, legally, because for two for two reasons, um, like the EncroChat evidence is being introduced here now. EncroChat is being named in an Irish court. Yes, to get back you. to that in a yes. sec. Even though um, it's in extradition proceedings as opposed to looking for a conviction or placing a case before the courts, but it's still... Being used. Being used, yeah. It's being used in an Irish court Um I can't think. I mean, I know it's been mentioned probably, but like this is this is the evidence presented by the UK officials. It's the first time. Yeah. There are cases that I can identify where EncroChat was used and where EncroChat messages led Gardaí yeah. to something and they have not mentioned that a single no. time in court. So this is being said in, in public in court and it's also going to test um, because obviously Patter Keating is resisting extradition um, he had uh, he had a barrister arguing against that extradition, and it's quite complex. We won't probably get too stuck into it, but basically, his his barrister is saying, um, you know, you say this is him, but you don't give a location mm -hmm. where he is at the time when this message is alleged to have come from him. So that that's a big part of his argument. So basically, the the barrister is saying. Can you prove, even if you prove this is his Enco chat handle, Patter Keating's, can you prove he was in Ireland at the time when he sent this message? Because if he's not in Ireland, he's in another jurisdiction. Therefore, he shouldn't be charged. Or and did you read that, that that was the argument that it was because of where he's physically or was it because of the different legal systems there, between the different territories? There, there's a couple of bits to it. And he, he also makes that 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 case um that there, he, his his barrister says there's no location in the warrant as to the specific whereabouts of Mr. Keating during the time period in question, which is mm. January 2020 and May 2021. Then he also speaks about um, the differences between the legal system in Northern Ireland and that operating in, in England and Wales, who share a, a single legal system. The, the North has its own kind of legal jurisdiction. And it meant that Northern Ireland had been treated as a foreign territory by the issuing state in the warrant. So that's another kind of complex issue mm. about where he was, which which jurisdiction is relevant, and then also, um, you know, the 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 different jurisdictions basically. So it is going to be tested to a degree. Um, yeah, it's all about his residency and and that. Yeah. Are they actually? trying to look for the location of the phone. I think they're looking for his location to prove well, they have to prove either territory and therefore which law yeah, But what he lies. says was, exactly, and he says that intercepted text messages did not prove the location of his client. Mm -hmm. So even if you say this is him, it doesn't, you have to say he was in this location. He's arguing he has to say he was in this location when this message was sent God, in I'm order not to... i judge here in this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what are you talking about? But I also think that uh, I thought that the the barrister, who's only doing his job and mm. is obviously defending his client as best he can, but he does point out that there's an overcrowding in UK prisons and therefore it would be against his human rights to move him to UK prison. Yeah, I think that's that... slightly grasping, <laughs> well, is it? Well, they all, I think they always throw that in. I mean, that's, and part of that is, of course, that um, it becomes, is, uh, you know, we were, the, the UK was part of, obviously, the EU. The U UK have left the EU now. So those arguments probably apply a bit more where when we're all parted since Brexit, like mm. when we're all part of the EU, those things kind of apply a little less. But I think that was kind I'd of... I'd like to have attended that, actually. I'm sorry I didn't attend it in total because I wonder, did, did part of this extradition and I think it's it's continuing as we record this but you know is there an argument from Keating that that's not my phone I have nothing to do with that I've well I mean I think it's up to the, the state to prove that it is him I suppose is what they're saying and he's he's his defense is saying also that for during the time period in question when these some of these messages are occurring he's saying that uh Patrick Keating was in prison of course yeah, which he and was. Patrick Keating yeah. was sir uh, 
he he's been in serving prison. an eleven year term, I think, for uh, for directing a criminal organisation. He, of course, would have been caught up in that plot to kill James Mago Gately by the use of the uh, Estonian hitman Imre Arrakis, and um, he is he was basically one of Bomber Kavanagh's number one guys here in this country. Yeah, uh, for a long time. I mean, Keating is quite an affable character when you see him kind yeah. of, you know, polite. You certainly wouldn't yeah. identify him exactly. He doesn't look no. like a criminal. She no. says in a ridiculous fashion. No, and he also has even, even, even his uh, anchor chat handle isn't very criminal. No, it's not it? criminal. Yeah, exactly. But he, he was one of these sort of people who was working here constantly for, for Kavanaugh, obviously fiercely loyal. But he's now facing, because um, he's coming towards the end of his own sentence here in Ireland, and he's now facing life imprisonment in the UK. Yeah, now that's a maximum um, sentence. I wouldn't imagine he would get that, but that is the maximum that's sentence what, for what, what for, he's ultimately yeah. facing and fighting against. So, you know, um, they're getting big sentences in the UK, though, on these Encro Chat cases. There's, you know, there's Absolutely. an acceptance of the evidence from them. They have been challenged in the courts. The the whole Encro Chat process has been challenged and has been, uh, you know, proved itself to be upstanding, which brings us back to the fact that, OK, these are all allegations and we have yet to put these before a UK court to see what the judge or jury has to say. But if we're to believe these allegations in this case so far, that Patter Keating was operating on an EncroChat phone. He had that EncroChat phone while he was uh, a free man and possibly while he was in prison, um, depending on the dates and, you know, the timeline of this. But he is a very significant player in the Irish criminal underworld and he has clearly been using an EncroChat phone, as has Liam Byrne, who, while he hasn't been in this country for a while, is a significant player in Irish organised crime, as is Thomas Bomber Kavanagh, as is his son Jack Kavanagh, and all of them are on EncroChat phones. All of them are on EncroChat. Um, simultaneously, uh, a, a well-known criminal who we cannot name because yeah. of a court restriction uh, pled guilty to a series of very serious charges in the North last week. That man is a, is, is a long-term resident of the Republic of Ireland. That's really, although he has different addresses, he's from the Republic. So these are kind he of... He was on an Encro Chat phone? He was on an Encro Chat phone, and that's one of the first big uh, Encro Chat convictions in the North. So there's also others in the North facing charges who are really from Dublin criminals, um, who have also obviously have these ties up the north. So the idea, I suppose, uh, and, and nobody believes this, but the idea would be that that Patter Keating and Liam Byrne were only using Anchor Chat to contact their Dutch and, and UK associates. But when they got up to their criminal activities in Ireland, they went and used a different phone, I suppose, farcical as that may seem. And the reason you're saying that, of course, is because one of the excuses given by uh, in private briefings from uh, senior members of on Garda Síochána who made management decisions not to act on the EncroChat information in the same way as other jurisdictions did. So the EncroChat phone hack obviously happened from April 2020 for yeah. three or four months until the whole EncroChat phone network realised what was happening and sent out an SOS to all its users. It was one of the biggest uh, communication systems used by organised criminals across Europe, in Belgium, in the Netherlands, in the UK and in Ireland. Um, and Ireland was one of the countries that... Uh, after the hack by the French who found the server, brought in the Dutch who were uh, experts in in sort of getting in on these phones and these supposedly bulletproof phone systems when they were up live on the hack, basically listening in to what was going on in the organised crime network across Europe. Ireland got that information in live time. We were the only country who didn't um, pass that information on down from the Crime and Intelligence Division. It was held within that. And I do know certainly of one occasion, of two occasions, that um, there was some surveillance work um, done as a result of live information mm. coming in. Um, that has not been said officially in court, but basically in other countries in the UK, the, the information came in every day. A central unit 
disseminated and passed it out to Liverpool, to Birmingham, to Manchester, to Newcastle, to wherever it was relevant. Their, uh, you know, senior detective units looked at it and passed it on further down to the localised areas. And they acted on as as a, a threat to life. So if they get this intelligence that there was a, say, a murder was planned, they'd go in and swoop on this and they'd arrest guys and then they wouldn't obviously if they were charged or whatever they wouldn't say where they got the intelligence from it would just be put on intelligence and they allowed that to go on for three months until it all came to light and that ended that it went on they didn't only act on threat to life though they did move in on drug shipments that they realised were coming I mean we've touched on this when we've been speaking about Maurice O'Shea Salazar the Kerry man who's wanted in Chile believed to be on the run in Mexico in relation to uh the running of drugs from the Sinaloa cartel into Europe. And we've seen the EncroChat files yeah. in relation to his network and we've seen a number of shipments that uh, are understood to have come through Dublin yeah. port. Yeah. Uh, one of them we were able to identify may have been... Yeah, I mean, look, seen. there were seizures, in, but yeah, without getting into the specifics of it, there were seizures that were in or around that time of, of major cocaine seizures, for example. So whether, you know... That all adds up to, to to being, I mean, we don't know because actually in connection with one of those very significant seizures, I don't think anybody was, there was an arrest, but it was really of a, a truck driver and I don't think it ever came to court as of this point. So we don't know if that, like there, there's there's a reason to believe that the, the, the guards or revenue acted on information given to them through the, the anchor chat hack. But it hasn't come to it hasn't come to court. No, and in this case, I suppose from a basic point of view, while um, the UK state say that Patrick Keating was the one who was organising yeah. and organising the logistics and transport of these weapons, which were found in Newry, you don't see the Irish courts taking the case and looking to extradite Bomber Kavanagh and Jack Kavanagh no. and Liam Byrne. It's the other way around. The UK are taking the case and they're looking to extradite Patrick Keating. Exactly, and I suppose the the, the real. Uh, the wonder of the anchor chat hack was that instead of picking up the guys, collecting the drugs, transporting the drugs or storing the drugs, it allowed police to prosecute up another level. So, I, you know, they were able to get the guys who were arranging these, these deals, but never were going to put their hands on anything. Mm, mm. So for years, obviously, police forces have really relied on catching people red handed and maybe you might turn the odd person or get lucky in some way to bring up to, to target his boss. But the anchor chat just took that layer away and they put away all sorts of people, yeah. including money launderers that never would have really likely to have come before the And courts. you talk about layers, like, I mean, we would consider the Kavanaugh organisation to be a serious organised crime group, but they were considered that in the UK as yeah. well. But they're only getting to them now. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. just shows, you know, what came before them and, and you know, how they... Yeah moved the stuff through the courts because there's been thousands of of charges brought and um, cases put before the courts. But we're in 2024 now. Those cases started in the aftermath of the hack in June of 2020. So we're four years on. Yeah, I mean, look, and it's it's interesting to see the word anchor chat in in an Irish court. It is. So I've been... And I'm going to have an anchor chat party. <laughs> well, we're going to see now how the, the Irish courts interpret that evidence. Obviously, uh, an extradition proceeding is not a criminal conviction. So it's it's going to be a different uh, standard of proof. They're going to, they, they probably decide that if somebody has a, a legitimate case to answer, as opposed to somebody is found guilty or not guilty, they're not found guilty or not guilty in an extradition proceeding. It's obviously that's up to the UK courts for when they're brought in. Um, it's, it's you know, there's different matters there. I'm going to try and explain some of Patrick Keating's def- defence, right? Because it's, it is complex. Go on. Do you, so, do you think you need to yeah, I think explain I d- it just to me? Or no, no, to, to, to well? yeah, because I don't, I just, I'm just going to explain and it kind of highlights maybe the complex reality of the anchor chat things. Like so, been in the um, remedial maths class. Well, no, well, I mean, I'm probably going to get this wrong. So we'll, go and okay. go for it anyway. So uh, Patrick Keating's barrister says that if it was the case that Keating, so there, there's a conspiracy and it's an international conspiracy, right, to buy these guns and move them. So they're bought in the Netherlands. It's arranged in the UK. They're landed in Northern Ireland 
and possibly through the through the Republic of Ireland. So it's an international conspiracy. Mm-hmm. I mean that that is the business of the the Kinahan cartel and and this the organ, burn organized crime group. They're operating across the borders. So, but Patrick Keating's defence is that. If it was the case that Keating was in either the Netherlands, Northern Ireland, or the Republic of Ireland during this alleged offence, that then his client should not be surrendered to England because it's the English officials that are seeking his extradition and that any agreement into any alleged conspiracy entered into by his client or the discovery of weapons in County Armagh were therefore both outside the jurisdiction of the warrant. So basically they're saying, unless you can show where he was when this happened and unless that was in England, he was in England for this, then you're 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 operating across these sort of borders and it's outside the jurisdiction of the warrant. So that that's kind of yeah, it's, complicated. It's, it's a really heavy legal argument. It's a heavy legal argument and you're going to see that then this is probably, you know, the Irish officials didn't fancy all these arguments. Maybe the the guards, did they? I don't know. We don't know what they... What I they... just know that a decision was made that they were not going to use this anchor chat stuff in court because they thought it was going to fail. Yes. And this, so is, this, it, is, this is the complex legal arguments, he's, you know. But there was a decision made by people there was a decision. who saw a problem before they tried to tackle it. Exactly. We all work with people like that yeah. who see problems that aren't even in the ether yes. before anything is tried. Yes. And that was the decision. And that decision was rubber stamped by Drew Harris. Yes. And of course... He was the Garda Commissioner at the time. And of course, the other countries in Europe um, also foresaw these problems and... Um, you know, in Holland and in France, there's been significant challenges against the Anchor Chat convictions and in the UK. They have all gone through the courts and ultimately the Anchor Chat hack evidence has stood up legally. Mm-hmm. Now, they went through very elaborate uh, appeals procedures. But, you know, there is a certain leeway. And um, yeah, it, look, it looks, as I said, we can't FOI it and see why they no, decided not no, to do what they did. There but was a couple of private briefings given and that was the reasons given that uh, it was all going to fall apart in court. That was some uh, advice given by, you know, a catastrophist, yeah. obviously. Yes. And the second thing was, no Irish criminals you were using Anchor Chat phones anyway. Yeah, and it's a very Irish thing, isn't so, it? Do you always, you always see... Uh, the I find the, that story if you want me to. Which one? The, the, about the phones. Yeah, but they always see the... Um, uh, the we always hear this about the, the government saying, well, we got legal advice and we couldn't do it. I mean, that that's that's a very Irish uh, phenomenon, you know? Mm. Well, look, if we get legal advice, we do what we're true, told true, as well, true. in fairness. So, you know what I mean? You're really out there if you are going up against legal advice and you're operating. Yeah. Oh, I won't find this now, but I will find it and read yeah. it out to you at some point. Um, you see, Byrne also argued from during his extradition from Spain, which he thought that he was going to have inhumane treatment in the UK jail. What's wrong with the UK jails? They can't be that bad, are they? <laughs> well, I mean, they're, 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 oh. I mean, all jails are bad, I suppose you might say. Um, but I, I do think that's a, a part of that is the fact that that it's it's a different regulatory system because it's because of Brexit. So look, Reuters, they always... Britain to spare minor offenders jail in effort to ease prison overcrowding. Mm. Mm-hmm. Overcrowded UK prisons are already failing society. More foreign prisoners to be deported to free up cells and tackle overcrowding. Okay, they have a point. Yeah. Britain's brutal and overcrowded prisons pro- pose a risk to us all, said The Guardian last August. Um, obviously, the conditions are worse there than they are possibly here. Yeah, I mean, of course, there was an attempt to extradite a guy from South Africa to Ireland and he was making the same uh, argument about Irish prisons were inhumane and overcrowded and violent. and Three square meals, so, hot water yeah. and a bed. And a, a PS5 or whatever else you can afford. Exactly, in your room, so. yeah. Okay, well, um, we're going to come back to this for sure. This is going to be one of these cases that we're going to follow as it goes through the courts. And, you know, we'll see how Padder Keating fares out. Yeah. Do uh, many people win in their fights against extradition to there, the UK? There's, I mean, obviously there's a huge tradition of, of extradition fights between the UK and Ireland. But in recent times, I can't think of many at all. The only person I can think of that won in regard to extradition to a European um, country was uh, Ian Bailey. Ian Bailey, yeah. And that was because the French wanted to do him for murder after the Irish ruled that there were the DPP rule, there wasn't enough evidence. No, I mean, and our legal system is kind of a very similar basis to the UK as well. So that would make it even harder. 
but he's having a go. So, a go. you know, let's see where he goes with that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the, all that help and explanations about... Yeah, the, I enjoyed the, the Harry Potty, Potter reference to the scientific explanation of x-rays, I have to say. Well, do you know, if you had something that you could have, you know, to have that was out- outer worldy, what would it be? For me, it would be one of those capes. No? Okay. No, no, it's good. it's good. If you could have some sort of a super power super, <laughs> you, you know, hero thing, what would it be? Would you like one of those spider thingies on your hands that you could climb up walls well, well look if, if that's on offer I'll go for that alright but, but yeah. surely you'd think about this I'd like um, yeah I'd like um, super speed I'd like an invisible cape would you or something that would make me fly from my feet <laughs> as in no, do you know what I'd really like I'd like my a, shoes I'd like a Star Trek transporter where you just press the button and go where you have to go no to the traffic. past like no no oh to the just present just you want to go even I'm sitting down here I don't want to walk upstairs yeah. Press the button, reappear upstairs. Would you like that? Would you prefer that yeah. to an invisible cloak? Yeah, well, like, yeah, I would. Yeah, why would you? Why would you want an invisible cloak for? Um, spy on your yeah. your enemies. Spy, of course, and just generally, sort of, you know, <laughs> not be. You know, you could go anywhere. It'd be fantastic. You could no. just sit down somewhere and, and have a cup of. Co- oh, you'd have to have the cup of coffee in under it, but you know, and nobody would bother you. Yeah, you like uh, having a tent. It would. And you were a child in the living room. Did you ever have a tent in the living room as a child? I did, I did. I did too. I wondered there when I came out with that, when it vocalised from my brain and came out my mouth, was that weird? I used to they have were, a little... They were simpler times back in were. the 80s. Or I used to have a little sort of Wendy house thing in the sitting room and I used to, you know, build it or whatever. Build them and they will come. Mm. But I used to put it together and, and, you know, have it and then put a couple of cushions in it. Yeah. And then I'd go in and I'd watch the television through the little <laughs> shitty window in it. Yeah. What does it all mean? I don't know. I'll what give I'll give the psychological I will I will I will do one of my professor professor yes, professor uh, psychological Donald. analysis on this. Dr. Uh, Donald, go on. Yeah. Oh later you need a to later point, yeah. I'd need to research. Well I think it's similar to sort of, you know, building dens under hedges yeah, and everything. Yeah. You're always trying to create a, s- a sense of security and a home. Yeah, a sense something. of security and, and yeah. 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 Wow. Get onto that. Wow. From Patter Keating. <laughs> To Wendy houses. <laughs> that is actually just sort of, you know, yeah. sums up crime world. Yes. Sorry about that, people. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.